Hi, I'm David Hamburger, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play over the turnaround in a fingerstyle blues in the key of E. So, a little terminology, right? The turnaround can refer to two different things. It can be the last four bars of a 12 bar blues. So, in the key of E, when you go to the B7, to the A7, to the E, and then walk back up to the B. Some people call that whole thing the turnaround. But then there's also the idea of playing a turnaround, like a specific turnaround lick. Right, there's that. So we're going to um, be looking at how to play over the whole last four bars of the blues. And uh, then, and included in that, we'll be looking at some specific turnaround licks. So what we've got to do is talk about how to play over a B7 chord, which is the five chord in E, with some finger style moves. How to play over A7 in a way that resolves back to the E chord, because we've already played some uh, A licks in a, I think, lesson three in this series, the previous lesson, we did some A licks, right? But so A licks that resolve back to E, and then finally some actual turnaround moves. So three things, B7 chord, A7 that resolves to E, and then turnaround licks. So let's start with B7. We're going to use this B7 voicing, uh, which is, uh, second fret, first fret, second fret, open, and second fret, going up from the fifth string up to the first string. Pretty uh, standard open position fingering for B7. And the thumb is going to be playing on the fifth fret, keeping quarter note time, doing the steady bass. But now we've got to actually like fret the note, not just play it, you know, we don't have an open A or an open E, we gotta fret the note B, second fret on the fifth string, for the bass. And so there's a few different things we can do here. Here's one kind of melody you can play on top. So I'm playing through four beats, and on top I've got lies with the thumb is that you start with a pinch, playing the thumb index and middle on the fifth, third, and second strings, and then follow with the middle finger playing the open B, then another pinch of the triplet. So you're pinching uh, with the thumb, and then the third fret on the second string, and then open second string by itself, and then third string. Then uh, you're going to play on the next pinch, the open B string again. Repeat it with just the finger and then the thumb. And you could, on the repeat, grab the third string as well before getting the last downbeat. So all together, one and two and a three and four. So that's one kind of B7 leak you could do. You could also start with the melody up here, uh, maybe with like a triplet feel. grab a bit of the chord um, when you get a little bit through the lick. Right there. So in this case, again, quarter note and the thumb, but we start off with thumb and then index, middle, and ring on top. And you could roll it a little bit so that the notes come a little bit one after another. When you do it fast, it just kind of sort of ornaments the sound. And then, so you get the chord and then repeat with the ring finger two more times. So one and a, uh, another pinch here, two and a, uh, going from the pinch with the thumb and the second fret on the high string to the open E and then over to the B. And then another pinch with thumb, index, and middle, pinky on the third fret of the second string and then index on the third string. Going to the open B by itself and then one more bass note. So, all right, so two different ways to play a B, um, and um, those are kind of related licks. They both have a bit of that triplety feel. They both keep the steady bass. They're kind of interchangeable, and that's sort of the point, as we'll see in just a minute. So now A licks. Um, so we worked with this shape uh, when we were looking at licks in A. Um, this A chord that's got the pinky up on the fifth fret of the high string. And we can play an A lick out of this shape that resolves to E, meaning it, it starts in A, but it takes you back 
to the sound of E by the end of the measure. So something like this. And there you are, back in E. So four beats on A, and then resolving to E. And what we've got on top is a triplet feel, so one and, uh, so you're hitting the bass by itself then making a bar at the first fret on the second and third strings and picking with index and middle, and then bringing it up to the second fret. Now a pinch, that's the next beat, so a pinch with thumb and the pinky on top, over to second fret on the second string, and then to third fret on the high string. And now on the third beat, again, thumb alone, um, let's see. Oh yeah, so third beat is just thumb and then open high string on the and. And then the last beat is a pinch, thumb and second fret on the second string, pulling off and then hitting the high string for the and. So, or the, uh, I guess, so four and uh, E. So one, That's one kind of A-lick you can do. Now if we went up to this position, which you can think of as the top part of a A bar chord, or you can think of as sort of the shape of an E chord, slid up until it sounds like an A, um, we can play this kind of move. Uh, which I always think of as the Hubert Sumlin lick, because he Hubert Sumlin played with Howlin' Wolf for, I don't know, 30 years or something. And, that was, uh, I associate with, with Hubert Sumlin, I'm sure other people did it too. I don't know if Hubert Sumlin invented it, but he certainly popularized it on his records with Helen Wolf, and it's a cool move. So, uh, again, lots of triplet feel. Uh, the first beat is thumb, and then a slide from around the fourth fret into the sixth fret on the third string, and then over to the fifth fret on the second string. So you're kind of spelling out the beginning of an A chord, Next beat, we jump up to the seventh fret on the high string and come down chromatically. So you pinch, and then sixth fret, fifth fret. Now another pinch, a pinch between the thumb and the eighth fret on the second string, and over to the high string, and then the open B string. So, and finally beat four, pinch between the thumb and second fret on the third string to the open second string, hammer on to the first fret of the third string, and then high string and low string, pinch, and you're on the beginning of the next bar. So, so one and a two and a three and a four and a one. And I guess somewhere in there, when you get to this note, you might give it a bit of a quarter tone bend up. And just like when you're on this, um, playing that kind of B7 or you might give that note a bit of a push up, just goosing it a little bit. So there's two licks in A, and again, they're kind of interchangeable, and that's sort of the point. Uh, so finally, we need some turnaround licks. So we've done, say, B to A. Now here's where the actual turnaround lick happens. And by far the sort of most classic fingerstyle uh, turnaround would be something like. And that's, um, you hear this a lot, uh, Robert Johnson would do it in A. So here's the E version of that. So um, it starts off with thumb and then the high string. So one and. And now you're gonna be basically walking chromatically down the, the A string from the fifth fret, the fourth to the third to the second fret. And meanwhile, keeping up this kind of steady triplet feel on top, one and a two and a three and a four and a, on the high string with your ring finger. So you're gonna have one and, and now a pinch between the fifth fret on the A string and the high string, two and a, so the finger by itself after the first pinch, three and uh, four and uh, 
one into the next measure, and two, and uh, three. And that's the whole turnaround. So one, and two, and uh, three, and uh, four, and uh, one. And now the open E string, fourth fret on the E string, open A, first fret on the A, second fret on the A string. And then you kind of take a breath, and then you're back into the beginning. Now, another way you can do it, um, I think of this as more of like the Muddy Waters thing. Um, and again, everybody's done it, but probably whenever I first heard it, or it seems like he kind of did the definitive version of it. Um, although I don't think Muddy Waters did the seven sharp nine chord, but um, it's the same idea. You can see that you're starting the same way, thumb and then the high string. And then this is still coming back down. But now you're taking what looks like an E7 shape, second fret and, uh, on the fifth string, first fret on the third string. And if you slid that up to the fifth fret and the fourth fret, this shape is just coming down. So the index finger is coming along for the ride as you walk down. And you're doing a pinch on the fifth and the third strings, and then hitting the high string open and then coming back to the third string. So one and two and uh, now the whole thing comes down one fret. Three and uh, four and uh, one. And then, uh, let's see, um, would you hit the low string? No. So this is, this is the downbeat of the next measure. So one, two, three, four, one, two and uh, three. And so you're walking up chromatically, open first fret, second fret on the A string, and then putting down most of the rest of a B7 chord, first fret on the third string, second fret on the, first fret on the fourth string, second fret on the third string, and then pinky on the third fret of the B string. And then thumb comes over, and you just roll through thumb, index, and middle to get that seven sharp nine chord. So two interchangeable B7 chords. So now the thing to do is just mix and match. You've got two different ways to play the B7, two different ways to play A resolving E, and then two different ways to play the turnaround. And I did the math in my head a little while ago, and I think that means you have a total of eight different ways to play through the last four bars of the blues. So here are just a couple of ways that you could thread your way through this four bar section, right? So, in each case, we're gonna play a B7 chord into an A chord that resolves to E, and then play a turnaround lick. So you could start with this, like, um, and then go to, and then do the Robert Johnson style turnaround. Right? So B7, uh, sorry. Hubert Sumlin. Right? So we just went over all those licks. So you, you can see I'm just putting together stuff we've already done. And they just kind of, the parts just flow into, into the next, one into the next. So uh, then alternatively, let's say you started here. And then you could go to here. And then do the Muddy Waters turnaround. Right? So triplet. Several other, <laughs> several other possibilities because you know you could just you swap out any one move and you've got a, a different feel right you could start here and then go to this one and then do the other turnaround so um, the idea is just to kind of collect these if you can look at it in this kind of modular way and see how it's all strung together then if you come up with a different a lick on your own you can just drop it in and you've got another possibility there so that's the turnaround section, the last four bars of a 12-bar blues, including some specific turnaround licks. And in the next lesson, we will put it all together into a 12-bar blues. So we'll have, you know, we've got our licks in E, we've got our licks in A, we've got the turnarounds, we've got everything you need to put it all together and play through a whole 12-bar form a few different ways. So that's what's coming next. 
In the meantime, uh, if you've got a question or a comment, you want to say something about the video, please scroll down below and uh, drop me a line there and let me know what you're thinking about. I'd love to hear what you've got to say. And um, I'll see you in the next video.